Welcome back. We will address this topic of parity violation in beta decay in this lecture. This is perhaps slightly advanced for the scope of this course, but uh, because it's a rather fundamental truth of nature and uh, discovered in the context of nuclear sciences, I thought it is still useful to look at it. At least it will perk your curiosity. Uh, hopefully it will encourage you to go and read further. So let's move on. Um, much of engineering and sciences have to do with conservation laws. Uh, for example, in chemical engineering, uh, the entire concept of uh, transport phenomena has to do with conservation of momentum, heat and mass, and so on. Uh, likewise, there are many other conservation laws. And an important theorem, which is often not quoted in the context, context of conservation law, is the Noether's theorem. Uh, this is one of uh, theorem in classical mechanics. Uh, Dr. Noether is one of the famous uh, women scientists who did not get a Nobel Prize. Um, but what does the theorem state? The general content of the theorem is the following. Whenever you see a conservation law, it implies there exists a symmetry of the underlying potential. Okay, so let us try to elaborate this with an example to make it less abstract. Supposing linear momentum is conserved. So this implies there is a symmetry in the underlying potential when, and in this case, when you say linear momentum, there is a, when you translate the system linearly, the potential remains the same. So this implies there is an underlying linear translation symmetry in the underlying potential. Supposing you consider angular momentum, then there is a symmetry in the angular potential. Okay, so it can be um, circular, uh, it can have a circular symmetry or spherical symmetry. All these things would give rise to angular momentum conservation. So the general thing is for every conservation law, there is a symmetry of underlying potential. So you may also ask um, why energy is conserved. In this case, energy is conserved because of uh, time translation symmetry. Okay, So all these things were elaborated via the Noether's theorem. It's a very important um, uh, theorem in classical mechanics. And it also finds application in quantum mechanics. In the context of nuclear sciences, there are certain symmetries often referred to via um, CPT symmetries, okay? So this uh, means there is a charge symmetry, uh, parity, and time. So what do we mean by charge symmetry? This means that nature uh, treats the positive charge and the negative charge in the same manner. Supposing you have uh, the strength of interaction between positive and positive charge, which is a repulsive interaction, let's say, it will be the same as the strength of uh, repulsion between negative and negative uh, uh, charges. Okay, So uh, the fun nature does not fundamentally see the difference between a positive charge and a negative charge, and both are treated in a similar manner. As I mentioned, uh, there is this uh, time symmetry. There is a, a simple way to think about that is if I reverse the time, let's say the particle trajectory will also get reversed. So there are some issues um, when you come to entropy, okay? So entropy seems to have a certain direction, um, but that's a, a topic for another lecture. Um, but in general, uh, there are these two symmetries that are most relevant in the case of uh, nuclear sciences. Then we'll come to parity. So first we'll uh, classify certain things. This kind of coordinate system is called a right-handed coordinate system. 
and this is just a mirror image, okay, or uh, this kind of coordinate system is called a left-handed coordinate system. Supposing you frame loss uh, in this coordinate system, the loss should not really care whether it is a right-handed coordinate system or a left-handed coordinate system. So the loss should remain the same. Uh, because of this, uh, there are certain properties, okay? So when I move from this coordinate system to this coordinate system, that kind of transformation is called parity transformation. So this particular point in this coordinate system is, let's say, x, y, and z, that would become uh, in this coordinate system, minus x, minus y, and minus c, right? So there are certain implications, uh, there are certain mathematical behavior of function under uh, parity transformation. So we will look at uh, some of the implications uh, in this lecture in a qualitative manner. All these things have a lot of mathematical structure uh, which we are not elaborating in this course, uh, but we want to give a general physical picture um, in the context of nuclear science and engineering. So there is a famous um, statement uh, by a rather young scientists of Chinese origin, Yang and Li, uh, in 1956. They when they explored, there were a lot of experiments to suggest the electromagnetic interactions and the strong interactions uh, were invariant under parity transformation. Okay, so the parity uh, conservation was obeyed. We will clarify this. That's why I've just put uh, within quotes. We'll elaborate this. What exactly do we mean by this jargon? Uh, but a lot of experiments suggested this was true for electromagnetic radiation and strong interactions. Uh, for beta decay, weak interactions were the governing interactions. The question that was posed by Yang and Li was, are weak interactions invariant under parity transformation? So at that time, no experiments uh, had been done um, to test this uh, hypothesis, whether it is uh, invariant or not invariant. So in their paper, 1956, they also proposed certain kind of experiments. So they were, I think one of them was in Colombia. They met and uh, when uh, they met another uh, scientist, uh, an experimentalist, Dr. Wu, um, uh, and discussed some of the experiments on how um, this question can be tested uh, experimentally. So it's a very beautiful experiment, uh, one of the very fundamental experiment. Uh, we will also elaborate slightly more um, in the context for this experiment in the next slide. Uh, so this is generally referred to as uh, Wu's experiment, although in most cases, an experiment is never done by a single person. Okay, it's not the case like in Faraday's time or uh, Newton's life. Now, everything, especially experiments, is a collaborative effort. Uh, but despite that, uh, it is referred by a single uh, author's name because she happened to be the first author in the paper. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, irrespective of that, it's a beautiful experiment. Uh, so what do we have here? Cobalt, uh, there is radioactive decay of cobalt-60. It transforms to nickel uh, electron on an antineutrino. Mm -hmm. Cobalt, uh, being magnetic, uh, uh, it can, its, its uh, position in space can be aligned by an external magnetic field. Okay, so in order to align the magnetic um, uh, moment based on an external magnetic field, you have to do this experiment under at low temperature. Okay, so that it was done, I think, at 10 Kelvin or so. So that is a, a rather novel, novel experiment. How do you do this at low temperature, align uh, the magnetic moment of the atom, okay, uh, 
via external magnetic field. Okay, so if the temperature increases, uh, uh, of course, this alignment will be disturbed and they will uh, be in all directions at sufficiently high temperature. So it was run at low temperature. So the spins have to be conserved. This has a spin, nuclear spin of five. Nickel has a nuclear spin of four. Uh, you probably now know that electron has a spin of 0.5 and uh, anti-neutrino also has a spin of 0.5. So what was asked was the following. So when these experiments were conducted, it is hard to observe anti-neutrino, but electrons can easily be detected. Uh, or at least much more easily detected compared to detection of antineutrinos. So Dr. Wu uh, and her collaborators uh, try to observe the directions, direction in which uh, electrons were ejected, okay? So just imagine there is an external magnetic field. So because electron also has a spin magnetic, intrinsic spin magnetic momentum, uh, uh, a signaling moment, uh, therefore, it is like an angular momentum. So that will also be aligned. And the velocity is in this direction. So then we have to introduce another concept called right-handed and left-handed particles. So what are left-handed particles? The momentum vector is in this direction. The spin uh, is pointing in this direction. So that's the case here, right? Because it's an external magnetic field. Uh, uh, the mag uh, spin magnetic moment is, uh, spin direction is this way, and momentum vector is in this way, right? So it's a left-handed particle. This itself was a surprise, right? In the sense that there is no reason to believe that all the electrons will be only ejected in this direction, right? There is, uh, electrons could have also been ejected in this direction. Um, if the electrons were ejected in this direction, then the momentum vector will be in this direction, as well as the spin vector will also be in this direction. But then it would have been a right-handed particle. So the electron, uh, if it had, if there were equal number of right-handed particle and left-handed particle, then uh, the spin uh, parity or the parity would have been conserved, but that was not the case. The central observation, just to uh, retrace, is the following. All the electrons were ejected only in this direction and uh, not many electrons were elect ejected in this direction. So inherently, all the electrons uh, that were ejected here were left-handed particles. Again, um, many of these things are elaborated uh, in these references. So if you're interested, you should go to these references and read more. So let's first understand uh, Wu's experiment more. When do you say parity is not conserved? If the parity of the system does not change under reflection, reflection we say that the parity is not conserved. So what do we mean by that? Okay. So supposing you imagine a mirror plane. In this mirror plane, uh, everything would have been reflected, right? If you reflect uh, in this mirror plane, the velocity will be in this direction because you have an external magnetic field. Uh, the spin will also be uh, in this direction. Therefore, this left-handed particle would appear uh, right-handed if there were velocity in this direction. That was not the case, okay? So uh, here, the, the you only saw left-handed particles in the sense that even, yeah, so that's the main thing, okay? So, uh, so you didn't see any right-handed particles in this experiment, which suggested that uh, the parity was not conserved, okay? So the electrons were inherently uh, left-handed particle as what you got from this experiments. Okay, the neutrino was not observed. And there were also certain other experiments uh, which were conducted, um, which led to the same conclusion that in weak interaction, uh, parity is not conserved. So this was a major uh, 
uh, risen uh, leading to the Nobel Prize for Yang and Li. Uh, they were the original, uh, uh, who, the, the, the two scientists who proposed this um, these experiments and also raised this, this question. Okay, so uh, from the paper was published in 1956 and I think the Nobel Prize was given in 1957, which is remarkable. Usually there is a reasonable time lag between uh, when the work is done, when the Nobel Prize is uh, given off. Um, so that's a, a big deal. Um, it, uh, it uh, many more questions uh, were posed following the violation of this symmetry. So it's considered one of the very critical um, development in theory, all right? So there is another issue uh, which is not related to just physics. Uh, it's a controversial issue. So the Nobel Prize was only given to Yang and Li, all right? So it was not given to Wu. This question has uh, raised many uh, debates. Um, so um, uh, if you look at one of the famous online dictionary, uh, Merriam-Webster's, uh, what is the meaning of parity? It it says, in, in a, mostly in a sociological sense, the quality or state of being equal or equal, right? So one way to use this word, uh, as suggested by the dictionary, is women have fought for parity with men in the workplace, right? So uh, the question that is asked in the context of Nobel Prize is, uh, was parity between women and men, was it not met? Uh, because Yang and Lee were given the Nobel Prize, and usually you can give Nobel Prize to three people, and uh, Dr. Wu was not given, okay? So um, this question is very well addressed with proper context in this uh, popular science article. It's uh, available online. You should uh, all read up. It has very nice graphics about um, uh, parity violation, uh, especially in the nature of Dr. Wu's experiment. So it's also worthwhile. Uh, it makes a good reading. Okay, So I would encourage you to read that also. So this is a very fundamental truth of nature. So I thought uh, especially as it was found in the context of nuclear sciences, it's good to just look at this also. So this is the question. The answer is better uh, provided uh, in this uh, online article. So please read that. So in the next lecture, we will look at certain other aspects of selection rules in beta decay. We have sort of all these things were preamble, right? We discussed that all these selections rule, selection rules are to do with angular momentum, photon, and so on. Um, in the next lecture, we'll also look at certain applications of selection rules in the context of beta decay. Thank you.